Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. Today we're going to be talking about solubility equilibria or KSP. Let's get started. So solubility equilibria is just studying how slightly soluble salts dissolve in aqueous solutions. So you may remember when you learned your solubility rules, you learned that some salts were soluble, some salts were insoluble, and some salts were slightly soluble. What does that mean? Well, this is where we're gonna dive into the equilibrium of slightly soluble salts. So let's take a look at the example of calcium carbonate. This is a slightly soluble salt. So here is its equilibrium expression. Some of it dissolves to form our calcium and carbonate anions, and sometimes those ions come together and reform your calcium carbonate solid. It's in equilibrium. This is a heterogeneous equilibrium. So when we write the KEQ for this reaction, it looks like this. We just take into account the concentrations of our cation and our anion. Now, because we're talking about the solubility of a salt, we usually don't keep this as a KEQ, although you could because this is just a K for an equilibrium process, but usually we specify this as a KSP, SP being a solubility product. So you will hear KSP called KSP, you'll hear it called solubility product, or you can also hear it called solubility product constant. I feel like KSP and solubility product are the most commonly used term. Your solubility product is only dependent on the concentrations of the ions. It does not depend on how much of the solid you have. Now, often we will talk about the solubility of a solid, and that is the equilibrium position. So that is not the constant. This can be a little bit confusing. Your KSP is your solubility product constant. That is an equilibrium constant. Your solubility is the equilibrium position. It is not the constant. They're really close and it can be easy to get these confused. So it's important to get them very clear in your mind from the get-go because sometimes we'll talk about calculating a solubility product constant and sometimes we'll talk about calculating the solubility. Those are not the same thing. Let's look at the KSP expression for a different salt. So here I have bismuth sulfide. It is a slightly soluble salt. So some of this solid will dissolve and form the bismuth cation and the sulfur anion. Some of these ions will recombine and form our solid again. Remember, our solubility product does not depend on the solid. So our expression for our KSP is simply this. Just like with any KSP, you raise it to the power based on the balanced chemical equation. All right, so let's see how this works out in a calculation. So first, let's just calculate the solubility product constant, or the KSP. Again, this is the equilibrium constant. Now, the problem reads, the solubility of bismuth sulfide at 300 K is one times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter, or molarity. Calculate the solubility product for bismuth sulfide. This is where understanding the difference in your terms becomes really important. Remember, solubility is the equilibrium position. The solubility product is the KSP that is an equilibrium constant. Now we just saw this equation right here, and the best way I think to handle these KSP calculation is with an ice table. Okay, so let's set up our ice table just like we normally do. So initial change equilibrium, for KSP, these are generally very simple. Initially, you're only going to have solid. You're going to have no cation, no anion. Now we need to know our change. We know this equilibrium is going to shift to the right. We have no product right now, but we don't know how much, so we're going to use x like we normally do. So our change is going to be 2x for our bismuth and 3x for our sulfide. Remembering that this 2 comes from this 2 and this 3 comes from this 3. These are both positive because again, we know we're going to shift towards products. And our equilibrium concentrations are really simple because of course we started with 0 here. So this is again just 2x and 3x. So our KSP ice tables tend to be really, really simple, which is great. 
From the previous slide, we've already seen our expression for KSP. Again, don't forget the squared and the cubed here. And I'm just gonna plug in from my ice table. So bismuth is 2x, and that's going to be squared, and sulfide is 3x, and that is going to be cubed. We are trying to calculate our KSP. We're trying to calculate our equilibrium constant. We know our solubility. That's our equilibrium position, which in this case is our value of x. So x equals our solubility, and the problem gave this as 1 times 10 to the negative 15th. So I'm just simply going to plug this value in for x. Okay, so this gets a little long and a little messy. Bear with me. We're going to have 2 times 1 times 10 to the negative 15th. That is squared. And then 3 times 1 times 10 to the negative 15th. And that is going to be cubed. Just be careful when you put this in your calculator, okay? And we get a KSP of 1.1 times 10 to the negative 73rd. This is really not a very soluble salt at all. <laughs> Okay, so this was an example where we had the solubility and we calculated the solubility product constant. Let's do the reverse. This problem reads, the KSP of calcium phosphate at 298K is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 32. Calculate its solubility at 298 and the equilibrium concentrations of each ion at 298. Again, it's really important to differentiate solubility from KSP. We have the KSP, that is our equilibrium constant. Our solubility is our equilibrium position, which in our case is going to be our X value. Let's set up our ice table. Initially, I have no calcium and no phosphate. Nothing has dissolved. We know this is going to shift to the right to form some ions. So for my change, I'm going to have 3X and 2X. Just remembering the three comes from the three here and the two from the two here. And our equilibrium concentrations are three X and two X. Again, these ice tables tend to be pretty simple when we're talking about KSP. Now that we have our ice table, let's get our expression for KSP. So here we go right here. Don't forget that calcium is gonna be cubed and phosphate is going to be squared based on our balanced chemical equation. Now let's plug in our equilibrium concentrations in terms of X and we get a KSP that looks like this. We know our KSP, the problem gave it to us. We're trying again to get to solubility, which means we're trying to solve for X. So here's our value for KSP. Here, let's simplify a little bit our right-hand side of the equation. It can be easy to get crossed up in your powers of X here, so just be careful. Simplifying the right-hand side a little bit more, and now we can solve for X, and X equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative seventh. This is our solubility. So that is the first part of this question. We've got the solubility, but now we need the equilibrium concentrations of each ion. So our equilibrium concentration for calcium is just 3x. Again, this is from our ice table here. So we're going to take 3 times x, and that gives us 4.8 times 10 to the negative 7th. We're going to do the same thing for our phosphate. That is going to be 2x, again, just from our ice table here. And that gives us 3.2 times 10 to the negative 7th. So now that we have calculated a KSP and we have also calculated solubility, I want to talk about relative solubilities. So first I want to take the case of salts that give the same number of ions. So for example, let's compare the solubilities of silver chloride, silver bromide, and silver hydroxide. We can write up a generic ice table for this. So initially, as usual, we're going to have no cation, no anion. Notice the anion I just wrote here as X. All of these anions have a negative one charge and they all have silver. For our change, this is just going to be X for both our silver and our anion. Again, they have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 in front, so our equilibrium is also just X and X. Our KSP is going to be the same for all of these. It is simply going to be our silver ion plus our anion. These all have a charge of negative 1. They're all going to be raised to the first power. So our KSP for all of these is going to simplify to X squared, which means if we're solving for the solubility, which again is X, it's just going to be the square root of our KSP value. This means we can directly compare KSP values to compare solubilities because we're doing
doing the same math for each of these salts. So here are the KSP values for all of our salts and we can use those to place them in order from most soluble to least soluble, and that is going to be silver hydroxide is more soluble than silver chloride is more soluble than silver bromide. Now let's look at salts that give different number of ions. So for this example, we wanna compare the solubilities of lead sulfide, silver sulfide, and bismuth sulfide. Because these give different number of ions, their ice tables are going to look different, which means we need an ice table for each of these salts. Let's start with lead sulfide. Again, these are very simple. Initially, you have zero. In the case of lead sulfide, you're gonna have X and X here, which gives an equilibrium again of X and X, which just like we saw before, our KSP is going to be X squared. But now let's take a look at silver sulfide. This one's gonna be different. Again, we're still starting with zero for our initial concentrations, but for our consumed, we're gonna have a two X here for our silver. This is because in our balanced chemical equation, we're gonna have a stoichiometric coefficient of two in front of our silver, which makes this two X. Our sulfide is just X, so our equilibrium concentrations are 2X and X. So our KSP is gonna simplify to 4X cubed. Again, this is why it's important that we write a balanced chemical equation for all of these slightly soluble salts. Now, we have already seen bismuth sulfide. We worked with that before, but let's show the ice table again. Starting with zero concentrations of our cation and anion, again, bismuth goes 2x, sulfide goes 3x. That's the same for our equilibrium concentrations, and our KSP is 108x to the fifth. So for each of these cases, we're solving for X for all of them, but our expression for solving for X is a little bit different for all of them. So now when we look at lead sulfide, this is its KSP value. This is its solubility. Again, I solved for X using its equilibrium constant. And I can do the same for silver sulfide and bismuth sulfide. Again, using the KSPs, I can solve for the solubilities. Once I have the solubilities, then I can put them in order from most soluble to least soluble, which is gonna be lead sulfide, then bismuth sulfide, then silver sulfide. Now, when doing these calculations, sometimes they do happen to go in order of their KSP, but you can see in this one, they do not. So if you have a salt that has a different number of ions, you will need to calculate the solubilities individually for each of those salts. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks so much for watching.